We'll be starting this list of easiest nations for beginners with Poland. Poland starts off with 3.42 ducats from day one, as well as 21,000 troops in two separate armies within Podole and Krakow. That being said, Poland has very easy access early on to Lithuania via an event which lets Lithuania become your personal union junior member, which means you get an extra 26,000 troops from within the first year or so. You also can get Moldova as a free march from an event as well, and later on, 1460 can get Danzig as a free vassal too. Poland definitely has a lot of free subjects that it gets all the way up until the 1460s as well as it has a lot of great land that you can develop should you wish to do so and a very strong army. Poland's own national ideas are pretty decent as well with tolerance of heretics plus three, production efficiency, national manpower and infantry combat ability, calf combat ability plus 33 percent, discipline plus five and morale of armies plus 15 percent. The Polish ideas are seriously super powerful and once you get your PU over Lithuania you can even establish the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth diplomatically by having the Lithuanians as a junior member which means you're gonna get all of the Lithuanian lands without having to actually fight for them simply clicking a button once you get admin tech 10 and the province of Marienburg and Warsaw. If you'd like to know more about Poland and how to play as them you can check my guide in the description below. Do take into account however that expanding within the HRE is gonna be problematic so unless you're ready to to deal with a swarm of HRE members and the Emperor himself. I recommend that you concentrate your early expansion into Hungary to get the gold mine before they become a junior member of Austria as well as into the Balkans and the steppe lands with later expansion into Russia. Likely the chillest of beginner nations is Portugal. The reason for this is that Portugal despite having only 0.74 ducats at the start of the game and 15,000 troops it does however have an ace up its sleeve and the fact that it is a historic friend of Castile which means that you're almost ensured to have an alliance with Castile early game that being said you're basically protected nobody can touch your nation because you have a big blob that is Castile itself protecting you as well as you also start with an alliance with the nation of England you do however have one province in Ceuta which the Moroccans will never attack you for if you're allied to Castile in England but you can practice your attacks and expand your influence within the Moroccan area should you wish to especially to grab over the gold mine in Tafilal and expand into the African parts if you want. Basically your ensured conquest without having to worry about being attacked from everybody. If you want to attack Castile I don't recommend for a beginner to do that but if you want to there are ways to do so however we will not be discussing those in this video. One of the best things to do as Portugal is to grab the exploration ideas and start exploring and colonizing the new world. South and North America are gonna be a playground and you will be definitely the first nation to reach the new world before the Castilians even. As Castile most of the time is going to have a busy time with taking over Granada, Aragon and so on. Whilst you can just focus on your colonial enterprises. I highly recommend Portugal for those who have an interest in going colonial and even switching over to a colonial nation if you want to. The Portuguese ideas are really great for trade as well not only colonizing because you have 15 trade efficiency but also 25% colonial range which ensures that you're going to be the first to the colonies. Goods produced plus 10%, trade power plus 10, settlers plus 15 15, extra merchant and even construction cost reduction and artillery combatability. To take note Portugal also has an age of discovery splendor namely the Portuguese colonial growth which granted an extra 50 settlers per year. This is however available only if you have the mandate of heaven DLC. If you ever thought about starting in India then try out Bengal. Bengal is one of my personal favorite nations for beginners as it starts as a super strong nation having 17,000 units is quite a lot considering the most of your neighbors have below 10,000 and you also have 4.15 ducats mainly from taxation and trade with a little bit of production income but most importantly Bengal has a great mission tree which offers it great bonuses to both its trade and overall economy and to developing its starting lands. If you play as Bengal you have a ton of opportunities of expansion within India itself as well as within Tibet and even the Burmese and eventual Indo-Chinese Peninsula. Due to its amazing location, you also can go colonial and colonize the Moroccan trade nodes and eventually Australia, as well as bring about the fall of the Ming Dynasty in China. The ideas that Bengal have include national manpower plus 15% and infantry combat ability from the start of the game, which means that your troops are going to be significantly better than all of your neighboring country's troops, and you also get artillery damage from back row plus 15%. For the late game, this is insanely strong as a national 
international idea. If you want to play Toll, you also get Dev cost minus 10%, Trade efficiency plus 10, Idea cost minus 10, as well as Goods produced plus 10%, all of which will help your economy significantly and will lower the cost of you developing your provinces and adopting new ideas. Playing in India is very different from playing within Europe, but if you do decide to play in India, try Bengal as your first nation since it is the easiest one to start off as. One super easy nation to play as is Brandenburg. Brandenburg starts off as an elector within the HRE. There are seven starting electors and an emperor highlighted on the map through their different colors, namely orange for electors and purple for the emperor, whilst the regular members have green and the free cities have blue. Why is Brandenburg such a great starting nation? Well, playing within the HRE is very different from playing anywhere else within the map in U4. And if you start as Brandenburg, you have the best mission tree to start expanding within the HRE without having to worry about aggressive expansion as you would as any of the other HRE members because of the specific flavor, permanent claims, and modifiers that Brandenburg gets. But aside from that, Brandenburg also has some great national ideas that include cost to fabricate claims minus 20% and fabricating claims within the HRE is 50% more expensive. So that's a massive reduction when you play as Brandenburg. Not to mention the other ideas are pretty good including infantry combat ability, morale of armies, and later down the line you get the option of forming the Kingdom of Prussia after getting access to the provinces of Danzig and Königsberg and Prussia has the best idea sets in the game and a super great government type. Playing as Brandenburg means that you're playing as a slightly smaller nation than the majority of the nations on this list but despite that Brandenburg definitely has a strong army that can keep its own and by fixing your trade areas you can also have a strong economy. You start off with 1.22 ducats despite only having 65 development and 9,000 units so you definitely have way more troops than all of your neighbors minus Bohemia and Poland and through an event you get Newmark and Draumburg as core provinces within the first few years. Due to your mission tree you also have a ton of expansion opportunities and within the whole of northern Germany and eastern Germany with later down expansion within central and south Germany. If you ever had any thoughts about playing within the HRE then give Brandenburg a try it is the easiest nation to learn how to play within the HRE. One of the truly easiest nations to start your game as is Hungary. Hungary despite starting off with an interregnum because their king just died a day before the game started it does have an insanely great economy with 2.24 ducats and 18,000 troops but Hungary also has a gold mine in Hunt which it can develop to about 9 or 10 development giving it up to 6.66 ducats from that one province and can also get the gold mine in Kosovo very early on from expanding into Serbia before the Ottomans do. If you follow your Hungarian mission tree you're gonna have an easy time of conquering all of the Balkans with expansion into Bosnia, Serbia, Wallachia, can even get a free march in Moldova if you're lucky enough and finish off the Ottomans quite early on by taking Byzantium and feeding them back their cores. The Hungarian ideas have Cav combat ability plus 20%, national manpower plus 20, discipline plus 5, production efficiency and national tax plus 10% and domestic trade power plus 25%. Not to mention you can also create the estate general which offers no penalties from heretical or heathen provinces. This last idea here is ridiculously overpowered. You do have to be careful however as Austria will try to get a PU over you but you do start as an ally of Austria so you could actually reverse the process and make them your PU member later down the line through your mission tree and by not accepting them to be your overlord in the first place. The beauty about Hungary is that you do not need to necessarily be expanding like crazy you could just focus on managing your nation properly as you have all the time in the world or you could just expand like crazy there's plenty of opportunities whenever you're playing in the Hungarian region arguably one of the strongest nations in 1444 the Mamluks is also one of the easiest nations for you to start as as you can tell you start with an insane amount of soldiers 34,000 from day one and a sizable fleet as well as quite a large nation aside from that you also have your special Mamluk government type which offers power cost reduction, extra ducats and manpower through the government interactions and also ensures that you always will have a leader without having to fall under a regency at any point in the game. The Mamluks are super easy to be expanding with, taking over the Turkish Beyliks before the Ottomans do is highly recommended
extended so that you cut off their expansion into the east and force them to be expanding into Europe, thus curving their power overall. You also can quickly expand into the Persian areas, the Arabic areas since they are highly fragmented, they make a very easy target as do the Ethiopian lands for the same reason and not to mention the Ethiopian lands also have a couple of juicy gold mines that you want to take as soon as possible. Into the west the Maghrebi lands as well are quite disunited and easy targets for early and mid expansion. The Mamluks also can form either Arabia or Egypt or just unify Islam by having most of the Islamic provinces within their hold with a few specific provinces also. One thing that is for sure is that the Mamluks are a very expansion oriented nation so if you want to learn how to expand like crazy and have an easy time doing so then go ahead and try out the Mamluks. One of the truly easiest nations for beginners is Muscovy. Muscovy despite starting off with only 0.43 ducats in the early game it does have five different vassals all of which come with their own armies and you also have 26,000 units from the very first day. Aside from the really strong army and vassal swarm if you follow your mission tree you can early on get permanent claims on all of the steppe regions as well as all of Novgorod which means that you basically fix your economical problems right there. Taking over Novgorod is going to be a super easy war as will the war against Kazan for the gold mine of Bashgir. Muscovy also has great ideas such as shock damage plus 10% which in the early game is very important since shock damage is going to be the majority of damage inflicted in battles in the early phase of the game with land force limit plus 33% and morale of armies plus 10% that you get later on you get the ability to form the Russian nation which has its own much better national ideas mission trees and even its unique government reform when it comes to the mission tree the Russian mission tree basically is quite similar to the Muscovite one with a few additions the thing that really makes Muscovy a great choice for beginners is the fact that you are quite a large nation with a strong army and you have a lot of expansion opportunities within different religious groups around you the only other Orthodox nation you have to worry and take out is Novgorod aside from that everybody else is either Catholic or Sunni or even Tengri once you start marching into the Siberian parts playing as Muscovy basically shows you how to early on expand like crazy and blob out with little to no repercussions one of the easiest beginner nations is the nation of Castile Castile starts off in the Iberian Peninsula and it starts with an amazing 5.77 ducats a month as well as 24,000 units and even a fleet of 20 ships that include light ships heavy ships and transports Castile is extremely easy to play for any beginner as it has its very own gold mine from the start in the province of La Mancha which after you've developed to nine production development will grant you an extra 6.66 ducats a month aside from your taxation production and trade income Castile starting ideas are really great to help you out as you get 15% morale of armies from the very beginning and 5% Marines force limit whilst later ideas also will help you out but the early boost to your military means that you can easily match any of your neighbors and surpass their armies as well as keep the French at bay in case they decide to start munching into the Iberian Peninsula the location of Castile is quite great for both expansion early on into the Iberian Peninsula you can easily grab up Granada followed by the personal union over Aragon and even Portugal if you have access to the Castilian slash Spanish mission tree you can simply just follow your mission tree which will dictate your early expansion as well as it will help you out in your future establishment of the colonial empire if you're new to you for I highly recommend you try out Castile for a great and fun early game which will help you out understand more the way that the game works and how to early on colonize as well as how to handle your subjects be it personal unions or vassals one nation that is both extremely fun and easy for beginners and you for is France France starts off controlling the majority of the actual French region both directly through its own lands and its vassals in fact if you're curious about how vassals and subjects work France is your go-to nation as you start off with five vassals and with some special mechanics through your privileges to handle said vassals and increase your diplo relation slots the French have a pretty good basis for the economy starting off with 1.57 ducats and have the ability to get a lot more ducats from controlling the Champagne and later on the English Channel nodes if you start playing as France you will be faced with the war against the English from the early game if you don't declare it yourself on the 11th of December 
September 1444, it will eventually trigger through the main event, which gives you the option of either going to war with the English or you get the province of Maine and a truce. Albeit this will be decided by the English, do not let that happen, just declare the war yourself as you want to have a reconquest war to get back all of your cores from the English, since you do start with cores on all of the English lands in the French region minus Calais. The French have their own unique mission tree which offers a ton of flavor and if you follow your mission tree you can get a super strong nation in the early to mid game and they also have some seriously great ideas including discipline plus 5, national manpower modifier plus 20%, diplo rep plus 1 and even the 20% morale of armies later down the line with tech costs minus 10% this being the highest tech cost reduction from ideas in the game. If you want to learn how warfare starts off in the game and how to best use it I recommend France for those willing to practice war from an early stage in the game as you will be faced with a ton of wars both against the English as well as against your other neighbors be them Britons, Iberian nations, Italians or even the Germans. Anyone who's paid attention to the loading screen knows that the Ottomans are the easiest nation to play as whenever you're new to the game. There are a few reasons why that is. First off the Ottomans actually start off with 30,000 units from the very beginning and they have a ton of provinces both within the Balkan area as well as within the Anatolian area. Aside from that their national ideas are super good with 5% discipline, land force limit, tolerance of heathens and you do have a ton of heathen provinces, core creation costs and promoted cultures, manpower recovery, calf combat ability, tax and trade efficiency as well as a super good mission tree for your early game which basically explains to you where you should be expanding and it gives you all the claims that you need in order to expand. But aside from all that, the Ottomans also have a super strong economy early on. You got 4 ducats whilst maintaining 30,000 units and because of the Ottoman government type you can also recruit Janissaries which cost 10 military mana points per unit but essentially give you free units that spawn in without taking over your manpower reserves and which have insane fire and shock damage received bonuses as well as they have an army drill gain modifier of 100%. You cannot go wrong with this nation. Your armies are super powerful. You start in the best position for early expansion with a ton of weaker nations around you such as the Karamans, Kandar, Dulkadir, the Byzantines, even the Serbians, Valachians. All of these nations you can basically conquer within the first 20 years of the game followed with very easy expansion within the Persian lands, Mamelukian lands and even North Africa and Europe should you wish to. Having the Anatolian unit tree you also get better pips for your units early on. You get a fire damage pip from tech 9 whilst all of the Europeans will get their first fire damage pip of the infantry at tech 12. If you're a completely new player to U4 my honest recommendation is to give the Ottomans a try. Even if you fail you're still gonna win eventually your battles and your wars. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on to get notified whenever I release new guides.